Hi, my name is Bakhadr Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss about the density functions of random variables. So, if you remember in the previous lectures, we discussed about the standard normal distributions and the normal distributions. And if you remember, we have calculated, evaluated the probabilities of the normal distribution using the cumulative distributions. So, you know, the cumulative distributions are very useful and they are useful to obtain the density functions of the new random variables as well. And this is what we are going to do and consider today. So, let uh, let us assume that we are given one random variable x which has the uniform distribution between 0 and 1. We can easily find its density function. But now let us assume that we are given the new random variable y which is the function of the x. So essentially it is given as x in the square. What I want is I would like to know its density function, the density function of the y. So this is what we are going to learn today. So if you are given the density function of one random variable x, how to find the density function of another variable y, which is the function of the x. So in order to do this, we are going to start discussions from the PDF and CDF, so the probability density function, and its connection was the cumulative distribution function. So let's assume that we are given some function so PDF function, the probability density function of the random variable x. So here I'm just putting the small or big capital X in the subscription of the f in order to show you that this is the density function of the random variable x. So at the same time I can define the CDF, the cumulative distribution function of this random variable as the integration of this function from minus infinity until some point s, right? So this is the definition of the cumulative function. And if you remember, geometrically, it means that I need to choose this point s and the area under the density function from minus infinity until this point s is going to be the cumulative area, where this function, capital F of x, is going to give us the area until that point. So, well, if you remember, in a previous lecture, we've learned how to use this function in order to evaluate the probabilities, right? For example, if I need to evaluate the probability that your random variable is between t and s, then you have to find this area, and in order to find this area, what we did is we have subtracted the area until t from the area until s. So, essentially, so for the cumulative function of the x until the area until the point S. So minus the cumulative area until the point T. So this difference is going to give us the areas in between the T points in the intervals. So today we are going to see another application of the cumulative distribution. So well, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do this in the example. So let's say, let's say we are given the X which has the uniform distribution between 1 and 3. So do you remember the uniform distribution means that so in this interval our density function is going to be the horizontal line and everywhere else it is simply going to be equal to the zero. So the shape of this curve is going to be like this. Okay, well the height of this curve, essentially the height here, is going to be equal to 1 over t. So with this given here, right? So the density function is going to be equal to the 1 over t because we know that the area under this curve should be equal to the 1. And since we've got the rectangle with the width, which is equal to the 3 minus 1, which is the t, then the height should be equal to the 1 over t. Or if you remember the general formula to find the density function of a uniform distribution function or the uniform random variable, it was the 1 over b minus a, where b is the ending point of the interval and a is the starting point of this interval. So what I want is I would like to define the CDF of this random variable as well, so essentially the cumulative distribution function. And the CDF means that I need to find the area, for example, until 1.5. So if you would like to find the area until 1.5, what you would do? Theoretically, I mean, practically it is super easy, right? So you just find the width of this rectangle, which is 1 over t, and multiply this to the height of this rectangle, which is equal to the 1 over t as well. So the area is going to be equal to the 0 0.25, or 1 over 4, essentially. But theoretically, we are going to find this using the cumulative distribution function. 
so CDF function. So the F, capital F of X at the point 1.5 is the area under this density curve from minus infinity until 1.5. So I'm not going to take this from minus infinity because it is simply equal to the zero until one. So I just need to integrate this function, the density function from one to the 1.5. So it is really important for us to do all of the steps because it helps us to understand then later on the relationship, the true relationship between the PDF and CDF. So I'm just going to substitute this to here. It's going to be a 1 and 1.5. So the CDF, uh, so PDF, the probability density function is equal to the simply 1 over 2 dx. And if you integrate 1 over 2, it is going to be equal to the x over 2, right? And you have to substitute 1 and 1.5. So it means that you have to substitute 1.5 over 2, then minus 1 over 2. So 1 minus 1, uh, 1.5 minus 1 is equal to the 0 0.5 over 2, it is going to be 0 0.25, right? And it was clear that the area is equal to 0 0.25, but for us the procedure is more important than the answer in this case. So now let's discuss how we can derive the cumulative density function, cumulative distribution function, sorry, in general. Okay, so not until 1.5, but for any point s. So we are going to simply integrate the density function from 1 until s, not from 1 to the 1.5 as we did before. So if I just integrate this, I have to just substitute the density function, which is equal to the 1 over t to here. It is going to be the integration of 1 over t from 1 to the s dx, the integration of 1 over t, the antiderivative of 1 over t, it's going to be x over t from 1 to the s. And if I substitute s and 1, it is going to be simply s minus 1 divided to the t. Well, this is going to be the cumulative dense distribution function for any value of the s in between 1 and 3, right? So please note that if you substitute 1 instead of s to here, it is going to be equal to the 0. And if you substitute the 3, it is going to be equal to the 1, right? So the s can be any value between 1 and 3. So in general, we are going to define the cumulative distribution function like this, the density function of this random variable like this. So what is the more important question is, it is not the question is how we can obtain the cumulative function from the density function. It is more like more bigger question or the question is how we can derive the density function from the cumulative function. Right? So how to get this small f from the capital F? And if you remember the calculus, so you can simply take the derivative of the capital F to take to obtain the small f, right? So here we can try to do this. So let's just take the derivative of s minus 1 divided to the 2 with respect to the s. So in this case, if you take its derivative, it is going to be equal to also uh, s over t minus 1 over t and its derivative with respect to the s. The derivative of the s over t is going to be equal to the 1 over t and the derivative of a constant is equal to the 0 simply, which is simply the small f of x. So in general, we are going to take the derivative of the cumulative function, so with respect to the s, sorry here, so in order to obtain the density function. So which is basically the result of the fundamental uh, fundamental theorem of calculus. So if you are given some function, the integral function f of s, where it is going to be the integration of another function, small f, from minus infinity until this s. So please note that this s, which is on the board of the integration, is it the argument of this function. That if you take the derivative of this function with respect to the s, not with respect to the x, sorry. If you take its derivative with respect to the s, then you're going to obtain the small f, which is inside your integration. So the theorem is one of the most important theorems of calculus, which is called the fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is how we are going to obtain the density functions of the new variables. So by taking the derivative of their cumulative functions. So let me do a couple of examples to explain you more how we are going to do this exactly. So let's say again, you are given the distribution function at the, the x as the uniform distribution in between 1 and 0. And you have to find the density function of the new variable y, which is the x in the square.
So I'm going to first of all find the density function of the x. The density function of the x it is going to be equal to 1 over 2 simply, right? If x is between 0 and 1. So now let's try to find the cumulative density function, cumulative distribution function, sorry, of the y. So the fy until some point s, it is going to be the probability that y is smaller than s. Is it possible to find the probabilities uh, associated with the variable y? Well, it is possible if we would know its density function. So if I would not know its density function, so that is why I can't really calculate this probability. But what I can do is I can express this y with the x. Right? So I can write as, hey, so this is the same as the probability of the x in the square is smaller or equal than the s. Right? So since x is positive, I can take the square root from both of the sides without losing any equalities, inequalities, so without changing any inequalities. It is going to be the same as the probability of the x is smaller or equal than the square root of s. So again, so the x can take only positive values. It is given that it is uniform distribution between 0 and 1. If it would take the negative values, then you should be careful when you're taking these square roots, right? So it, it should go, for example, if it would be from minus 1 to the 1, it, is, it should be the x should be from minus square root of s until square root of s, for example. Okay, so, I, so the probability that y is smaller than s is equivalent to the probability that x is smaller than square, square root of s. So I know how to find the probabilities for this case now. So it is going to be the integration from 0 until square root of s, right, of the density function f x dx. Okay, so I need to take the integration of the density function of the x in order to find the cumulative functions, right? So now, once we know the cumulative function of the y, is it possible to find its density function? Yes, I need to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So in this case, the density function of the y, it is going to be derivative of the cumulative function with respect to the uh, x in this case, sorry. Oops, sorry. I have to take this derivative with respect to the s. So it should be s here as well. So I'm going to use the chain rule. So it is going to be simply derivative of this function fy with respect to the square root of s times to the derivative of the square root of s with respect to the s. Okay, so this is called the chain rule. So I need this in order to derive its density function. So here, this derivative, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, is going to simply give me fx, which is going to be equal to 1 over 2. Okay, so additionally, I have to multiply this to the derivative of the square root of s, which is going to be equal to the 1 divided to the 2 square root of s. Okay, so it is going to be equal to the 1 divided to the 4 square root of s. So that's going to be the density function of the new variable y. So if you would just put this like the what is the density function of the y, it is going to be equal to the 1 divided to the 4 times the square root of s is going to be its density function. So any probability associated with the y can be now found using its density function. So at the first glance, it might be a little bit confusing. So let us do one more example in order to illustrate this. So let's say now we are given the same random variable x with the uniform distribution between 0 and 1. We have to find the expected value of the e in the power of x. If you remember the expected value of the variable, so let me, let me say that y is going to be equal to the e in the power of x, and we have to find the expected value of the y. Okay. So we can do this in two different ways, and I'm going to show you, demonstrate you how we can do this in both of the ways. So first of all, I'm going to take, derive the density function of the x, which is going to be equal to the 1 over 2 simply. I'm just going to remind you how we can find the expected value of the variable. So the expected value of the y is equal to the integration in a whole range of the y, y times its density function, and its integration with respect to the y. 
this is going to be the expected value of the y. So this is how we can do this. Or if you are given some function of the x, you can find its expected value as well. So you have to just multiply this function to the density function of the x and integrate this with respect to x. So obviously the second method is easier, but let us do this in the first way and, and let's see whether we are going to obtain the equal results, okay? So first of all, the procedure to find the density function of the y, this y, is always the same. So what we have to do is, we have to first of all find its cumulative function. So the, prop, the cumulative function of the y until some point s is equal to the probability that y is smaller or equal to zs. Well, again, I'm going to ask you the same or similar question. Can you find the probability associated with the random variable y? At this stage, no, because we don't know its density function. But what we can do is we can substitute the y with the x, with the function of the x, which is going to be e in the power of x is smaller or equal to the s again, right? So I have to take a len from both of the sides in order to get rid of the x, okay? So it is going to be the probability of L, uh, oh, ln of e of x, it is going to be simply x. The probability of x is smaller than ln of s. Okay, so is it possible to find this probability? So the probability of the x is smaller than ln of s? Yes, I have to just integrate the density function of the x, right, with respect to the x from, uh, from 0, because x changes from 0, until ln of s. Okay, so I think we can we can do this. Um, I'm, go I, I'm, I'm going to integrate this. So let's substitute this. It is going to be the integration of the 1 over t is going to be simply 1 over t times the x. We have to substitute the 0 in ln of s. It is going to be equal to the ln of s divided to the t. Okay, cool. So this is going to be the density function. And if you remember, the, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, we have to take its derivative with respect to the s in order to find the density function of the y. So this is the, the cumulative function, sorry. So the density function of the y is going to be derivative of the f with respect to the s. It's going to be equal to derivative of the ln of s over t with respect to the s, it is going to be equal to simply 1 over s times the 1 over t, or is it going to be equal to the 1 over 2 s simply, okay? So please note that now we have to put the values for the s because it cannot now change from 0 to the 1 because the y is the new variable, which is the e in the power of x, right? It is going to change from 1 up to e. Okay, so we have to now find its expected value. The expected value of the y is going to be equal to the integration from 1 to the e, right? Because if x changes, if x changes here, if x changes from 0 to the 1, then y is going to be changed from 1 to the e. So y times to its density function, so the density function is going to be 1 over 2y actually, right? It is not 2s because I have to change this to the y as well. And then we have to integrate this to, with respect to the y. So again, y and y are going to be cancelled out, and we are going to simply have 1 over 2 times to the y, 1 over 2 times to the y. From 1 to the e, it is going to be e minus 1 divided to the 2. Well, this is the, the expected value of the y as we found this using the density function of the y. But again, we could find expected value using this formula as well, and let's try to do this now with this formula. So the g of x in our case is simply e of x, right? e in the power of x times z. Density function of the x is simply equal to the 1 over t dx from 0 to the 1. Its integration is going to be e to the power of x over t simply from 0 to the 1. And if you integrate this, it is going to be equal to the e minus 1 divided to the 2 as well. So you see that these two results are the same. And we could obtain this in two different ways. The second way is, of course, easier. But our purpose was not to just obtain the answer. Our purpose was to learn how to derive the density functions of the new variables using this cumulative functions. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope that this was helpful for you.